أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم كتاب انزل اليك فلا تكن في صدرك حرج منه لتنذر به وذكرى للمؤمنين اتبعوا ما انزل اليكم من ربكم ولا تتبعوا من دونه اولياء قليلا ما تذكرون صدق الله العظيم with the blessing of allah we are beginning our study of surah al-araf I told you that these two surahs go to make a pair, pair of Makki surahs, Al-Anam, Al-Araf. Now this Al-Araf is the largest surah, Makki surah in the Quran. It, is, it consists of 206 ayat and 24 sections. Although there is one Makki surah that is Shu'ara, which consists of a greater number of ayat, 227. But the ayat in Surah Shura are very small. So that those 227 ayat go to make only 11 sections. And if you compare the volume of the two, the volume of this Surah Al-Araf is two and a half times more than that of Surah Al-Shura. So this is the biggest and the largest Makki Surahs. Now what is the relationship between these two surahs? You know, pair, if two things are a pair, there must be some similarities. And there must be some difference also. Where those two things come become complementary to each other. So you will find that we have read, you know, the whole of Surah Al-Anam. Mention has only been made in somewhat detail of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Neither of Nuh, nor of Hud, nor of Saleh, nor for that matter of Lut, or Moses, etc., etc. Because, you know, these are the Abba'ur Rusul. Abba'ur Rusul, Naba means a very important news. Amma yatasalun, anin Naba il azim il lazihum fi mukhtarifu. Naba, a very big news. So the big news of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Abba'ur Rusul. What are those news? That a prophet, a messenger was sent to such and such nation. They belied him, not believed in him. They were destroyed. This story repeated many a time in the Quran. Nuh, Hud, Saleh, Lut, then Shaib and Moses. Six messengers of Allah are repeatedly quoted and, you know, referred to in the Quran. You will find in Surah Araf, in the chronological order, in the historical sequence, the mention of these six messengers of Allah. As for Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, it is never given in the Quran that some such punishment came to the people of Ibrahim. It appears that he is the climax of the prophethood. To, pick, to nations where prophets were living, if the nations didn't believe in the prophet, no punishment came to them. The king at the time of Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam, he didn't believe in him. And the whole of the Egyptians, they didn't believe in, in, in Jesus, that he is the prophet of Allah. But still, you know, the, 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 the attitude was different. The messenger, whenever he came, he said, Atiyullah, Urmudullah wa atiyun. You have to do worship to Allah, and you have to obey me. This is the call of all the messengers. But the prophets, they might be living like, you know, all ya Allah, but the only difference between a waliullah and a nabi is that to the nabi, wahi was coming, revelation was coming. To the all ya Allah, to Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, 
And for that matter, other all year, Allah of this Muslim Ummah, Wahid didn't come. But they were very pious people. So much good spread from their personalities in their society. So actually, prophets are more resembling the Aliya. The only difference is that revelations were coming to them. But messengers are a different category. They represent Allah. They come and demand, believe me, obey me. You have to obey me. Ali Abdullah wa Atiyun. You have to obey me. We have read, you know, in Surah An-Nisa, obedience to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa ma sallam in Rasulin illa li yutab iznillah. We have sent no Rasul, no messenger, but that, they, they, that he should be obeyed. Wa ma yutari Rasul afadat Allah. Whosoever obeys the messenger, he actually obeys Allah. So you know, we find in this Surah Araf the story of six of the messengers of Allah to whose nations the severest punishment came. Azabul istisal, qote adabur al qamil lazina zalamu. When their roots were cut, when they were all annihilated, except the few who came to believe in the messenger. But no such thing appeared in Surah Al Anam. Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Although he was himself Muwahid, but you know what happened to his nation? Even though he was thrown in fire by the nation, but only a slight reference at one point, but not in that way. So actually, this is a a a, you know, a point in which these two surahs come close to each other. That this subject is more dealt with in Surah Al-Araf. And at tazkir be Allah, you know Allah's, Allah's blessings, Allah's bounties, Allah's creation. All these things are more discussed in Surah Al-Anam. We have read, and this Allah's punishment, messengers coming, and if the nations don't accept them, then the dire consequences. They are more detailed discussed in Surah Al-Araf. Alif, Lam, Mim, Saw, these are the alphabets which are pronounced separately. Huruf, Muqattaat, separately. And nobody knows the exact meanings. There are so many conjectures. Nothing has been, you know, given to us by the Prophet ﷺ also. So we can't say. There are certain opinions, but you know, in this rapid translation, there is no time for the discussion of these things. Kitabun unzila ilayka fala yakun fi sabrika harajun minhu. Oh Muhammad, this is a book, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which has been sent down to you. Fala yakun fi sabrika harajun minhu. There should be no, you know, grief, no narrowing of the chest in you due to this. Why? You shouldn't be very much grievous, very much grieved on whether I am doing my duty or not. This was the thought which haunted Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Although he was doing everything that he could do, day and night, preaching, preaching, preaching. Although, you know, people were telling him to be, you have gone crazy, Majnoon, you are a poet. Or you have been possessed by some evil spirits. But he was preaching. Even then he thought, maybe I am not fulfilling my duty. Why are they not believing? Maybe I am at fault. Maybe I have not been able to convey to them the way I should have conveyed. فَلَا تَكُنْ فِي صَدْرِكَ حَرَجٌ There should be no, you know, impediment in your hearts. The تُنْزِرَ بِهِ And this book has been only sent to you. So that you warn the people with this. Again, Behi. Unzira kum Behi. We find these words in Surah Al-Alam. Uhiya ilayya had al-Quran. Le unzira kum Behi. Here, le tunzira Behi. So that you warn people with this book, with this ayat. Wa zikra alil mu'mini. And this is actually a reminding for the people who believe. Ittabi'u ma'unzira ilaykum rabbikum. Follow what has been sent down to you from your Lord. Don't follow any other protectors or friends, leaving him aside. But little are you admonished. 
little reminding you get. وَكَمْ مِنْ قَرْيَةٍ أَهْلَكْنَاهَا Now this is the main theme of this surah as I told you. How many towns and townships have been? أَهْلَكْنَاهَا Whom we destroyed. فَجَاهَا بَيَاسُنَا بَيَاتًا To them came our punishment. Either at the night or whom kainun. Or during the noon when they were making kailula, when they were, test, they were resting because it was the you know, custom with all the Arab nations of that area. This kailula is, is, is small sleep, they pause during the noon. Famagana darwahu vijahum basana. But when our punishment, our azab came to them, the only call and plea that they took was, Illa an kalu inna kunna zalimeen. They lamented. Verily, we were on the wrong side. Verily, we were the evil doers. فَلَنَسْأَلَنَّ الَّذِينَ أُرْسِلَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَنَسْأَلَنَّ الْمُرْسَلِينَ This small ayah is very profound regarding the basic philosophy of Qur'an. What is the institution of messengerhood? فَلَنَسْأَلَنَّ الَّذِينَ أُرْسِلَ إِلَيْهِمْ We will surely, definitely question them also to whom we sent the messengers. وَلَنَسْأَلَنَّ الْمُرْسَلِينَ and we shall question the messengers also. I told you, Messengers are accountable. And this is very logical. If you send a message to some friends of yours, do this work by tomorrow evening. Otherwise, I will have to sustain some loss. Please do it before that time. And the work is not done. The loss has come to you. Now you are furious. You go to the friend. I sent you a message. You have to do it. Why didn't you do it? Who is responsible for the loss that I have sustained? And if he says only one sentence, Brother, your message didn't reach me. It was not conveyed to me. Can you say another word to him now? Now your Anger will be directed towards the person to whom he had entrusted the message to convey to him. I will go to him. Look here. What have you done? I entrusted you with the message. You had to convey it to him. You didn't convey. So now you are responsible for the loss that I have sustained. Isn't it logical? The same is the logic of this ayah. Allah sent his message to a messenger. Now it was his duty to convey it. If supposedly he fails to convey, now who is to blame? The people will go scot free. Oh Allah, he didn't, he didn't convey the message to us. They will go scot free. The whole blame will come on whom? The messenger. And if he has conveyed, well, he is relieved of his duty. Now they will be questioned. Alam yatakum rasulun bin rabbikum? Didn't they convey to you our message? Yes. Alu bala wa rabbina. The message came to us. So this is actually, this is called shahada. That is why we read in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ya ayuhar rasul, balig ma'unzila ilayka min rabbik wa illan tafal fama balagta risalata. O oh, Messenger of Allah, convey everything that has been sent to you from your Lord. And if you fail to do it, then you will not have fulfilled your responsibilities as Messenger of Allah. Ya you have Rasul, Ballig Ma'un Zilaikam Rabbik, Bailam Tafal, Fama Balakta Risalata. And that is why, you know, on the occasion of the last pilgrimage, the Prophet took a testimony from the whole of the audience. More than 100,000 people. 120,000. 124,000. After giving the finishing touches to his message in his sermon, the sermon of the last Hajj, then he asked a question from the audience. Allah al Have I conveyed to you the message? And the whole congregation replied in a chorus, one voice, Inna nashadu anna kakad ballagta wa daita wa nasahta. 
We bear witness to it. We testify. You have done your duty. You have conveyed the message. Then he raised his eyes and with his fingers he pointed toward the sky and then to the audience. Allahumma shad. Allahumma shad thrice. Oh Allah, be a witness to it. They are accepting. They are testifying that I have conveyed the message to them. And then the last, fal yuballighi shahidul ghaiba. Now the burden has come from shoulder, my shoulder to yours. Now it's the duty of those who are present here to convey to those who are not present here. And this includes all the human beings who were living at that time and all the human beings who are to come in this world till the doomsday. This is the duty of the Ummah to convey to them. If the Ummah fails to do the duty, it is to blame on the Day of Judgment. And the nations of the world will be able to sue us against, sue against us. Oh Allah, they were the custodians. They never conveyed the message to us. This is, فَلَنَسْ أَلَنَّ الَّذِينَ أُرْسِلَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَنَسْ أَلَنَّ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Now we are Mursal. Don't misunderstand me. Because Rasul, what does it mean? Messenger. Muhammad was the messenger of Allah. And the Ummah is the messenger of the messenger of Allah. These words were used by Muhammad Sallallahu himself. When you know Hazrat Muhammad ibn Jabal was being sent to Yemen as a governor, and the Prophet asked him, what will you do if a matter comes before you for decision? He said, I'll decide according to the Quran, book of Allah. What if you don't find anything in the Quran? Then I will decide it by your Sunnah. Then, if, the, if you don't find anything in Sunnah also, then what will you do? Summa istahidu. Then I'll try my best to have form an opinion. And the Prophet said, Alhamdulillah. And he gave him, you know, Shabash. Allazi waffaqa rasoola rasoolillah. Who has given, you know, this capacity to the messenger of the messenger of Allah. So actually he was an emissary of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad was an emissary of Allah. So he was the emissary of the emissary of Allah. So actually this is the whole Ummah is Rasul in that sense. Not one individual, the whole Ummah collectively is the Rasul of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we must look to our responsibilities. And then we shall relate to you with our knowledge and we were not absent. What was happening when, when Nuh was preaching to the people? We were not absent. We were watching what is happening, what Nuh is doing. When Muhammad was preaching in the streets of Makkah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah was watching, seeing what my bondsman is doing and what he has to bear for my religion, for my deen, for my message, how, what hardships he is undergoing. Then we shall all relate. Well, was no in il and the weight will be decisive on that day. This, uh, these wording can be translated in two ways. Hak only truth will have the weight. Falsehood will not carry any weight. And the other, only the weight will be decisive. What does it mean? فَمَنْ سَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُولَاءَكَهُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ so whosoever has, you know, his scales are heavy. The scales of the good deeds. If they are heavy, then for they, they are the people who will be, who will be flourishing, who will be successful. Waman khafat mawazinahu. And whose scales of good deeds are light. They don't come up to the minimum at least, minimum required. Faulaik al Nadina Khasiru and Fasau. But they are the people who have destroyed themselves, who have put them and their themselves in loss. Bimakanu biayat in ayatulibun. In what they were, you know, doing wrongly, treating wrongly our revelations, our ayat, behaving wrongly with it, reacting wrongly towards them. Walakar makkal naakum filad. And O oh mankind, we have established you on our earth. These. This is a settlement, divine settlement. We have settled you in our earth. 
وَجَعَلْنَا لَكُمْ فِيهَا مَعَيْشِ And we have produced in this earth for you the livelihoods, different types of livelihoods. Someone is telling the land and he is earning through it. Somebody is doing some other work and he is burning through it. All sorts of ma'aish, ma'ishat, ma'aish, that's the plural. So we have put in this. Qalilam ma tashkurun, but it's very little that you are grateful. You are only grateful very seldom. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَاكُمْ ثُمَّ صَوَّرْنَاكُمْ Today, now we have another ayah which supports the view of those who believe in evolution on the basis of Qur'an. This ayah, please look to the words. In the beginning we have the pronoun in plural. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَاكُمْ And we created you. And it is plural, not ka. Kum. Summa savvarna kum. Then we gave you a form. Features. Summa kulna lil malaikatis judul adam. And then we said to the angels, prostrate before Adam. Fasajadu. All of them prostrated. Illa Iblis. Except Iblis. Nam yakubna sajadeen. He not, he didn't join the prostrators. Now what does it mean? It can be taken to denote that a species was created first. And out of a species an individual was selected. And when the Ruh that was created much before, the Ruh, the spirit of Adam was put in that individual of that species, he became Adam. فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُهُ وَنَفَقْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِي فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَعْجِدِينَ Adam was not created as a single individual. This ayah can be taken to mean it. Because وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَاكُمْ ثُمَّ سَوَّرْنَاكُمْ ثُمَّ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَ تَسْجُدُوا لِآدَمْ فَسَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ So this, you know, goes in support of the view of those people. Although, it can be interpreted in other ways also. That potentially in the creation of Adam, all the progeny of Adam was also included. That can also be meaning. So it can be interpreted in both ways. But apparently the verse, they grant support to those people who believe in evolution on the basis of the Quran. Allah said to him, asked Iblis, what prevented you? That you didn't prostrate before Adam. When I had commanded you to do that, he said, I am better than him. You created me from fire. And you created him from dust, from clay. Nar is a very subtle thing. You know this dust and clay. Very inner thing. Nar is very active. Nar is superior. Now he saw only the animal being of man, which has come out from the clay. He couldn't see the ruh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that was breathed into him, into Adam. So he was seeing only the material aspect of Adam, not the spiritual aspect of Adam. So he said, well, this, this material aspect, in the material aspect, I am superior to him, and it is correct. But Adam was superior, why? Because of that soul. When I have breathed into him from my own soul, then you should fall down before him in prostration. Iblis couldn't see it. He saw only the material aspect. Allah said, now go down from here. It's not, it's not your right to be here, you know, and you know, insolent against Allah, arrogant against Allah. Now you get out from here, and you are from among the disgraced creatures. And he requested, now grant me a respite till the day they are resurrected. This was the request. And it was granted by Allah. 
A book was written in this continent. I think it appeared in 1958. Pawns in the Game by William Guy Kerr. It was published in Toronto, I think, in Canada. And this book is has described very fully well. There is one power, one center of all evil in this universe. And all these big leaders, and you know, they are like puppets. being moved you know just like the puppets all the revolutions that have taken place and all these big changes that are coming and all these you know big wars that have been fought one source and that is iblis no doubt he is the enemy from the first day of adam and his progeny and he is the enemy till the last day of this world and he has been given this chance and this respite Okay, you try yourself. You try to take my bondsmen away from the right path. Let us see how many of them they stick to the right path, despite your temptations and everything. So that is the basis of the struggle between khair and shar, between the good and the evil. Very good, Kapil Sharma and Lama Iqbal, because this contest, you know, it is now going to be very severe, very soon. It's going to be reach its zenith. वेरी सोन दुनिया को है फिर मार कहे रूह बदन पेश तहजीब ने फिर अपने दरिंदों को भारा अल्लाह को पामर दिए मोमिन पे भरोसा इबलीस को यूरोप की मशीनों का सहारा दिस कॉन्फ्लिक्ट इज गोइंग टू इंटेंसिफाई आर मगड ऑन नाउ इट्स नॉट वेरी फार ऑफ अल मलहमत उजमा एज द प्रॉफिट सल्लाम सेट अबाउट इट एनी हाउ قال انك من المنذرين قال فبما غويتني لا قعد لا قعدنا لهم صراطك المستقيم he said oh lord now that you have sent me astray you sent me astray you degraded me i will sit in ambush for them on thy straight path i will attack them summal atiyannahum min bayni yadihim i will attack them from their front from in khalfain from their backs وان امانهم فروم ذا رايت وان شمائلهم فروم ذا ليفت ولا تجدوا اكثرهم شاكرين اند يو ويل نوت فايند موست اوف ذيم ويتفول تو يو اي ويل بروف ات اي ويل شو ات قال اخرج منها مذوما مدهورا الله سيد جيت اوت فروم ذير ديسغريسد اند اكسبيلد لمن تبعك منهم هو سو ايفر فروم ذيم فولوز يو لام لان جهنم منكم اجمعين اي ويل فيل ماي جهنم وذ اول اوف يو وذ يو ويل جو اول ذا بروجيني اوف ادم هو فولو يو بيا ادم اسكن انت وزوجك الجنه ناو ذس ستوري اوف ابليس اند ادم ات واز جيفن ان ذا فورت سيكشن اوف سوره البقره اولسو اند اي تولد يو ات ذات تايم ذس از ريبيتد سيفن تايمز ان ذا قران just look to the importance that quran attaches to this because this is the basis of this struggle and conflict between good and evil in the world we have to understand it this is the basis of this conflict this is the basic philosophy of quran that is why it's repeated seven times surah al baqara surah al araf then you will see it in surah al hijr then surah bani israil then surah al kahf then again surah taha and again surah al-fad seven times in the quran wa ya adam uskun ta wajju kal jannah o adam dwell you and your wife in the garden fakula min haythu shaytuma and you eat from it from wherever you like wala taqraba hadhihi shajarata but don't go near this now this was you know, pointed quran doesn't tell us what type of a tree it was But you know this, and it for testing, you know, any tree could be fixed. It was only to see whether he, he is, you know, 
ہی اوبیز اللہ اور شیطان کے ٹیک ہی مبے اٹ واز اونلی ٹو ڈیمونسٹریٹ ٹو ہم دا شیتان ول ٹرائی ہز بیسٹ ٹو لیڈ یو ایسٹرے ٹو ڈونٹ ٹچ دس ریسٹ آف دی گارڈن از اوپن ٹو یو ایٹ فرام وچ ایور پلانٹ وچ ایور ٹری یو وانٹ ٹو ایٹ بٹ ڈونٹ گو نیئر دس دس بلا تقرا بہادری شجر تو فتح کون امین ظالمین ڈونٹ ڈو بوتھ آف یو ڈونٹ گو نیئر دس اف یو ڈو دیٹ یو ول بیکم فرام امنگ دی ایول ڈوئرس فار وس وس لهم الشیطان ناو دی سیٹن بیگین ٹو وسپر انٹو دیئر ایئرز اینڈ انٹو دیئر مائنڈس لی یبدی لهما ما اوریا عنہما من سواتهما سو ایز ٹو میک دیم سی their private parts which were up till that time hidden from them now we can't know what exactly happened at that time we have to take these words you know these are divine words the details what type of address they had or they were not conscious of their sex organs maybe that consciousness you know came after this but we can't say anything for sure but the result was وقال ما نهاكما and the and satan said to them ما نهاكما ربكما عن تلك هذه الشجره your lord has not prohibited you from going this to this tree and eating from it illa an takuna malakain only because except only because lest you become like angels aw takuna min al khalidin or you become immortals If you eat from this tree, you will become either like angels or you will become immortals. Khalidi. Wa qasama huma. And he swore to both of them, Inni lakuma la min al-nasihin. I am the best sincere advisor to both of you. Now this is to be noted. The general tradition goes with us that the Satan, you know, he led astray Hazrat Hawa, Eve. And Hazrat Hawa persuaded Hazrat Adam. This is not given by Quran. You know, in every ayah, the word is for the two. Kasama Huma. He whispered into both of them. Kasama Huma. Vavaswasa Lahuma. Vavaswasa Lahuma Shaitanu Leibdiya Lahuma. Maavuriya An Huma. Min Sawate Hima. Vakala Ma Naha Kuma. Rabbu Kuma. ان هذه الشجره الا ان تكونا ملكين او تكونا من الخالدين this is repeated so many times don't think that it was hawa or it was only the feminine side you know which erred both of them erred waqasabahuma inni lakuma min an-nasin i am your best sincere advisor fadallahuma bi ghurur so satan caused both of them to fall This is the fall of Adam. They committed a mistake. فَلَمَّا زَاقَ الشَّجَرَةَ When both of them tasted from the tree, بَدَتْ لَهُمَا سَوَاتُهُمَا Their hidden parts, their parts of shame, their sexual organs, they became evident to them. وَتَفِقَا يَقْسِفَانِ عَلَيْهِمَا مِنْ وَرَقْلِ الْجَنَّةِ And they began to sew together the leaves of the garden to cover them. وَنَادَا هُمَا رَبُّهُمَا Now their Lord called to them. أَلَمْ أَنْحَكُمَا أَنْ تِلْكُمَا شَجَرَةً Had I not prohibited you from that tree? وَقُلْ لَكُمَا إِنَّ الشَّيْتَانُ لَكُمَا عَدُوبُ مُبِينَ And didn't I tell you beforehand that Satan for you both is a clear enemy? قَالَا رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِنْ لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِ Now both of them repented. Both of them said, Oh, our Lord, we have done wrong to our own selves. And if you don't forgive us, and if you don't show mercy on us, of sure we will become among those who are going in loss. We will be doomed. We will be destroyed. Now this is actually a very important point in the theology of Islam and the basic distinction between theology of Christianity. 
Christianity doesn't believe that this sin was pardoned to Adam and Eve. It is based on the idea that every human child who is born in the progeny of Adam is born with sin, the original sin. While Islam tells us a mistake was committed by Adam and Eve, no doubt, but they repented, they apologized, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted their repentance. Now it was not to be transmitted to the whole of the progeny because the parents, you know, they committed a mistake or committed sin. So every whosoever, every newborn is basically human nature. He comes in this world with sin. No. On the contrary, the Hadith says, Every child who comes in this world, he is a Muslim. Yuladwala al fitra. He is born on fitra. Nature, pure nature. He comes here with pure nature. Kullum aludin yuladwala al fitra. Fa ababahu yuhavvedanihi, au yumajjisanihi, au yunasiranihi. Every human child who is born in this world is born with pure nature of Islam. Now it are the parents who turn him into a Jew, who turn him into a Christian, or they make a, you know, a majusi from, you know, out of him, but he is born as a Muslim al fitrah. Because you find in Surah Al-Baqarah, فَتَلَقَّ آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ there the kalimat are not mentioned. Here the kalimat have been mentioned. But the second part is omitted here. Why? Because it is, it is given there. Fatab alayhi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted their repentance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turned to them with all his mercy and all his forgiveness. Now he said, go down from this garden, settle down in the earth. And you will be enemies to each other. This is the conflict of good and bad. On the one side, Iblis and his agents, from the jinns as well as the human beings. Agents, working as agents of Iblis. On the other side, the prophets, the messengers, the books, the awliya Allah, the da'een who call towards Allah. وَمَنْ أَحْصَلُ قَوْلُمْ مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ this conflict has been going. Satiza kar raha hai azal se taim roz, chirag e mustafavi se sharar e bulahabi. This conflict has been going on throughout the history. Badukum le badin adu. Now you are enemies to each other. Walakum filar de mustakarum wa matawni lahim. And in the earth you have now a dwelling and livelihood for a fixed period of time. Not forever. An hour has been fixed already. And that's the doomsday. قَالَ فِيهَا تَحْيَوْنَ وَفِيهَا تَمُوتُونَ وَبِنْهَا تُخْرَجُونَ And he said, Now you will stay there, live there, then you will die into it. When you will die, you will be buried into it. Even if you are not buried, you will be burnt. For example, now where does go the ashes? You might put them in the, in the sea or in the ocean, but then again it has to settle to the earth. It goes, it goes there anyhow. If the birds have eaten your body, then the birds will die and they will become a part and parcel of the clay. So actually you will be returned to it. And then from this you will be taken out again. Now because you know by eating the fruit of that forbidden tree, the pear, our our fathers and our grandmother and grandfather, they became naked. So here, you know, with that connection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pointing towards an innovation, a very shame, shameful deed that some of the Arabs had invented in the name of piety, you know. And what was that? They used to make tawaf, circumambulate around Kaaba, absolutely naked, stark naked. But this is how Allah had made us. We put off all these things, you know. And when we are 
circle ambulating round the house of Allah, we should be as Allah sent to us in this world. Not to have these additional things on our bodies. And this they thought it was a very big act of virtue. And it was a very bad, very shameful act that they had invented. Now this is what is discussed here. Ya badi adama, O children of Adam, adanzallah alaykum libasa. We have sent down upon you dress, raiment of different kinds. So that you can cover your private parts of your body. Varisha. And also an adornment for you. When you wear good dress, you are adorned. Over and above this libas of raiment and clothes, you must have another libas, and that is a taqwa. That is much better, much more precious. ذَلِكَ مِنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ يَسْتَقْرُونَ These are from among the revelations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that they might be reminded. يَا بَنِي آدَمَ لَا يَفْتِنَنَّكُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ كَمَا أَخْرَجَ أَبَوَيْكُمْ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ يَنْزِعُ عَنْهُمَا لِبَاسَهُمَا لِيُرِيَهُمَا سَوَاتِهِمَا O children of Adam, this Satan, let not Satan tempt you or seduce you, as he turned out, he made, you know, your fathers, your, your grandfather and mother. He had made them to be turned out of Jannah. He made them strip and become naked from their, their dress. The Yuriya Huma Sawatehima. So that he showed to them their private parts, their, their organs of shame. Innahu Yarakum Hoa he and his tribe, his agents, his armies, they see you, mean Hesodatarahu, where from you can't see them. Jinns are invisible to humans. They can see us, we can't see them. Malaika see us, we can't see them. Because both of them are from Nur and Nar. The root of these both words is the same. Nur, Nar. Alif and Waw, they are huruful illah. And huruful illah, they, they are exchanged in one another's place. Nar, Noor. So they were created from Noor. Both are very subtle things. And angels were created from Noor and the, the jinns were created from Nar. So they are invisible. They can take the form. What is more subtle can take another form. But the inner body that we have, we can't change our form. They can take the form of man. Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam used to come to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam many a times in the form of a man. And mostly in the shape and in the features of Dahiya Kalbi razi Allah ta'ala alayhi He was a very beautiful, handsome person. So that was the shape taken by Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salam whenever he came to, mostly whenever he came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam in the form of a human being. A jinn can have can attire himself as a human being, but we can't do it. So they are potentially invisible for us, and they see us. Innahu yarakum, verily he sees you. Not only you, wa huwa qabil, wa qabiluhu. His agents of the jinns, and his, you know, his tribe. Min haysu la taranahum, from where you can't see them. إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا الشَّيَاطِينَ أَوْلِيَا لِلَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ And we have made these satans, now these are satans, not one shaitan. That was one shaitan, now agents included, these are the satans. We have made these satans friends of those who don't believe. If you believe in Allah, they will run away. If you don't have that iman and faith in Allah, they will come and overpower you. وَإِذَا فَعَلُوا فَعِشَةً قَالُوا وَجَدْنَا عَلَيْهَا عَبَانَ And when they are doing and committing a very shameful act, I have told you, making tawaf around Kaaba in an absolutely stark, naked form, they say, قَالُوا وَجَدْنَا عَلَيْهَا عَبَانَ We found our forefathers doing this. وَاللَّهُ أَمَرَنَا بِهَا And this was their argument. If our forefathers were doing it, they must have been ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How could they have done it by themselves? Allahu Akbar na biha. Tell them, Allah la ya murabil fasha. Tell them, oh no, Allah subhanahu wa taala can never command shameful acts. 
This is shame. Al haya min al iman. Al haya shubat min al iman. Haya, you know, shyness, shame. They are from among the highest faculties of human beings. Highest faculties. This faculty is present even in some of the more evolved higher animals. The elephants never mate in the presence of other elephants. They go to privacy. Privacy. When a she elephant, you know, she gives birth to a child, all the males get away very far off, and they surround that, you know, wood and jungle, so that nobody can now enter, and only the females attend that 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 female, uh, you know, elephant when she is delivering a child. So all these things are from basic nature. And in man, this, you know, shame and shyness has reached its climax. And we read it in Physiology of the Brain, that the highest functions of brain are shyness and fear. These are the highest functions. Why? Fear, to preserve yourself, so that you can run away from whatever can, can take your life. So this is the highest function, preservation of the self, and shyness. They are the two highest functions of the brain. That is why when you take liquor, these two highest sectors, they are knocked down. When they are knocked out, you become more brave. You become more shameless. Now you can speak, make a better speech. Because now, you know, you have become shameless. Behaya basho hatche khaikun. When you have become behaya, you know, you can do anything now. So actually the resultant effect of this liquor and alcohol is that apparently you become more active, more strong, more mobile, but actually what has happened? The highest function of your brain has been knocked out. The shyness and that fear has gone out, so apparently you have become fearless, shy, you are not shy anymore. So this is actually shyness, so much of the Iman. قُلْ أَمَرَ رَبِّي بِالْقِسْتُ قُلْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَعْمُرُ بِالْفَاشَاءَ تَخُولُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Are you saying and attributing to Allah which you, don't, which you never know? You don't have any proof, any document. قُلْ أَمَرَ رَبِّي بِالْقِسْتُ Tell them, my Lord has commanded justice. وَعَقِيبُوا وَجُوهَكُمْ إِنْ لَكُلَّ مَسْجِدُ And straighten your faces on every time of prayer. وَدْرُوهُ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ and call him, pray him, pray to him. But Mukhlisina Lahuddin is very important to understand. Keeping your deen exclusive for him. Regarding both worship and obedience. If you are praying to him but you are committing shirk also, he will not listen to you. Go away. Unless you have that ikhlas, tawheed. You are exclusively his bondsman. You are obeying him exclusively. You love him most as, as compared to any other being. If this is not the condition, your deen is not khalis. It's not pure. Mukhlisina lahuddin. If you have made your deen exclusively for him, both regarding obedience and love, and worship, then he will respond to your prayers. وَيَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُحْتَدُونَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُدِّينَ كَمَا بَدَاكُمْ تَعُدُونَ As you were created in the beginning, you will return. Again, you will be created. As you originated, in the same way you will return. فِيهَا تَحْيَوْنَ وَفِيهَا تَبُوتُونَ وَمِنْهَا تُخْرَجُونَ These words came. In ayah number 25. And in the same way, Kama badakum ta'udu. Fariqan hada. But during this period, a party Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided to the right path. Wa fariqan haqqa alayhimu zalala. And there is another party whom this, this misguidance, you know, has occurred. They have taken hold of another party. All this error and injustice. اتخذوا الشياطين اولیاء انہم اتخذوا الشياطين اولیاء they have taken the shayateen the satan and his agents as friends and protectors من دون اللہ leaving Allah besides Allah ویحسبون انہم محتدون and still they think that they are rightly guided یا بنی آدم خزوزینتکم اندکل مسجد 
O sons of Adam, take your adornment at the time of every prayer or at the place of every prayer. Masjid is ismu zarf. And it can be zarf makan and zarf zaman. Masjid, prayer time, prayer place. Whenever you are going to a mosque, you put on your dress. And it should be the better dress. You are going to the court of Allah. You are presenting yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not a shabby dress. If you go to some function, if you go to a dinner, how much you know take care of your, of your dress? But you are going to mosque and you are not at all any careful about your dress. Khudu zinatakum in the kulle masjid. You must have the dress. Best you will be, you should be dressed in the proper way. At every time of prayer, at every place of prayer. Vashrabu, vakulu vashrabu. And eat and drink. Balatus refu. But don't exceed the limits. Don't be extravagant. Don't eat anything haram. Don't drink anything haram. And then also not overeat and overdrink. It's rough both ways. Innahu la yuhibbul musrifeen. Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like the extravagance. Qul man harrama zinat allahi lati akhrad alayhi baadihi. Now this has also been another extreme throughout the history of religion. Some people, they become pious. Now they think we should not take anything which is you know, very good. And very tasty meals we shouldn't take. Why to take this fruit and these things? We should take only very coarse meals. And this to them becomes a very precondition for piety and for godliness. And they don't want to take upon them wear good dress. Ask them, who has made, declared illegal or impermissible the zenith of Allah? Allah has given you this endowment. He has produced all these things. Only you should earn through halal. But whatever you earn through halal, you can have best things to eat. If you can afford it, go and eat it, eat them. If you can afford, have good dress. It is not against taqwa. It is not against piety. The monasticism, you know, the Rahbaniyah, that is not in Islam. Who had forbidden these things, you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has made for, for men. And the good things of eating. Tell them, these things Allah has created for His believing people. In this world also. But exclusively in the hereafter. Exclusively for the moments in the hereafter. In this world He gives something to others also. But the moments also can partake from it. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created these things for his believing bondsmen, believing people, not for the kuffar. It's only, you know, for the sake of this trial and testing that he's giving to kuffar also, but Allah has created them for people who believe in him. So don't deprive yourself only under wrong notions of piety and taqwa and zuhud. In this way, we detail our revelations for those people who have knowledge or who want to have knowledge. Tell them, that my Lord has made, declared unlawful whatever is shameful, whatever is indecent, whether it is hidden or apparent and evident, while isma and sin, while baghiyah, and trespasses and oppression. Baghiyah well, goes, if it is against Allah, it is trespassing his limits. If it is against people, it is oppressing the others. Well, Baghiyah begair al haq without any reason. And that you associate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whom or for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not sent down any authority. And that you attribute to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for which you have no knowledge, no authority. These are the things prohibited by Allah. Not eating something good or not wearing something good. These things have not been prohibited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for every community and every nation there is a time fixed. When that time 
fixed time comes for them, la yastakhiruna saatan wala yastakhdimun. Neither they will be able to delay it, even for one hour, nor they will be able to advance it. To whom, to whosoever nation Allah sent a messenger, if time was fixed, till that time they are free, whether they accept or not accept, whether they believe or not believe. Till this, that fixed hour comes, neither the punishment can come before that. Even if the Prophet wants that they should be punished now, enough is enough. They have denied me, they have refuted me. No, it's not on your authority. We have read last night. Had it been in my power, then you know the settle, the, the matter between you and me would have been settled long ago. So that is the, the I, I need to hear again. Neither it can be delayed for an hour, nor it can be brought earlier. Now these ayat are just like the concluding ayat of the fourth section of Surah Al-Baqarah. فَإِمَّا يَاتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدًا فَمَنْ تَبِعَ هُدَايَ فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَعْزَنُونَ وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا أُولَائِكَ أَصْحَابُ اللَّهِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ يَا بَنِي آدَمَ إِمَّا يَاتِيَنَّكُمْ رُسُلٌ مِّنْكُمْ O children of Adam, whenever messengers will come to you from me, تَقُسُّونَ عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِي Relating to you and narrating to you and reciting unto you my revelations. فَمَنْ اِتَّقَى So whosoever will fear Allah, will have taqwa of Allah, will have proper regard for Allah, will have the consciousness of Allah, وَأَصْلَحَ And mend his ways and rectifies his his behavior. فَلَا خَفُنَ لَهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَعْزَنُونَ So there will be no fear upon them, nor they will grieve. وَالَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا As for those who will deny our revelations, who will belie them, وَاسْتَقْبَرُوا عَنْهَا And turn away their faces from that due to arrogance and haughtiness. أُولَائِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ they will be the people of fire, whom fiha khalidun, and they will remain it forever, forever. فَمَنْ أَزْلَمُ مِنْ مَنْ اِفْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ قَزِبًا أَوْ كَزَّبَ بِعَيَاتِهِ So this subject has been repeated many times. Who is more evildoer than the one who concocts something and some false thing and then attributes it to Allah? أَوْ كَزَّبَ بِعَيَاتِهِ and in the same way, who can be more evil doer than that, that person who belies his revelations? Ulaika yanaluhum nasibuhum min al-kitab. They will have their portion which has been ordained for them. In this world, till they remain, they will be eating, they will be drinking, they will have money, they will have all the comforts. This is which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already written for them. In their taqdeer, it is the destiny. They will partake from it. أُولَائِكَ يَنَالُهُمْ نَصِيبُهُمْ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ حَتَّى إِذَا جَاتْهُمْ رُسُلُنَا So when then our messenger will come to them, our messengers, and here it means the angels of death, يَتَوَفَّوْنَهُمْ And they will take possession of their souls. قَالُوا أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ They will say, where are those whom you were praying and calling besides Allah? Where are your associate gods? قَالُوا ضَلُّوا عَنَّا They will say, they have vanished away from us. They have gone with the wind. They have just vanished. وَشَهِدُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ And they will testify against their own selves. أَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا كَافِرِينَ That they were the unbelievers. اللَّهُمْ رَبَّنَا لَا تَجْعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ O our Lord, don't include us in those people. بَارَكَ اللَّهُ لِي وَلَكُمْ فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْعَظِيمِ وَنَفَعْنِي وَإِيَّاكُمْ بِالْآيَاتِ وَالذِّكِ الْحَكِيمِ الله أكبر الله أكبر. The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. 
A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at t-a-n-z-e-e-m dot u-s or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.